Hello and welcome to the new video in our series of electrical test instrument devices. Today we will cover one of the important electrical test instruments that all electricians working in the maintenance, installation and commissioning of electrical equipment and installations must understand. They must have the knowledge and skills to use this instrument in a safe manner. Today's topic is insulation resistance testers. An insulation resistance tester, also called a megameter, is then used to measure the ohmic value of an insulator under a direct voltage of great stability. To measure a high resistance, techniques for measuring low current are used. A constant DC voltage source is applied to the resistance to be measured and the resulting current is read on a highly sensitive ammeter circuit that can display the resistance value. As you can see, there are various ones to choose from. They will all have the same basic function, but will have various levels of DC output voltage. The one that we're going to look at today is manufactured by a company called Mega. As you can see, this one comes in a hard protective cover, which protects the meter from dust, moisture and impact damage if it's dropped. Once we open the case, you can see that the meter sits in its own compartment with a separate compartment to store the test meter. This model of insulation tester is made by Mega, as we said, and it's a model number MIT310. When we open the protective cover, we can see that the meter has an LCD screen, a rotary selector switch to allow each of the functions to be selected. There are two buttons, one marked test and the other one has a padlock symbol which locks the tester into a test mode once the test button has been pressed, but this is only when doing insulation resistance testing. At the rear of the meter, you can see there are input connections which are coloured red, positive, and black, negative. Below the input connection, you can see it's marked category 3, 600 volts, and category 4, 300 volts, for the surge protection safety function of the meter. Okay, let's look at the rotary switch in more detail. You can see there are four colour-coded sections. Orange is for resistance, red is for insulation resistance, black is for voltage, and the grey is an off position to save battery power when not in use. The orange section is for measuring ohms or continuity using a beeper function. The red section is for measuring insulation resistance, and you can see there are three output voltage settings, 250 volts, 500 volts and 1000 volts. The black section is to allow the meter to be used as a voltage tester. As with all test equipment, before using the meter, a visual inspection should be done looking for any sense of damage or distress. So you're looking for cracks, has it been dropped, any signs of water damage, any signs of overheating. If it's in good condition, fine. What we're going to do now is switch the meter on and check each individual function to make sure it's all operating. So you can see by switching it on, the display comes on, the voltage levels will change according to what your what selection's on. And then the final one is to check the resistance levels. Now, with the continuity one, as you can hear, the meter goes into beep mode, then switches itself. This lets you know it's been activated. Okay, as with all test equipment, the, one of the important parts is the test leads. So yet again, a visual inspection of the test leads should be carried out before you use them. So you're looking for signs of damage, damage to the insulation, and one of the also important things you're going to look at is the category level of the equipment. All the leads will be stamped with the same cut level as the meter has, so either cut 3 or cut 4. And then look at the probes. Now as you can see with this one, there's damage on the end of the crocodile clip. So therefore that one cannot be used and we will need to obtain another one. So same again, new one, check it, make sure it's okay. Do the same to the red lead. 
So a visual inspection, looking for signs of damage, check the category levels on it to make sure everything's okay. Right. So what we're now going to do is connect the crocodile clip onto the probe. As you can see, these are designed to slip over the top, which makes it a much, source, much secure connection. Now we're going to put the leads into the meter. So the black one goes into the black connection, and the red one goes into the red connection. Okay, now we're going to rotate the selector switch to the ohms position. As you can see, the meter goes to 1000 ohms, the scale goes to the right hand side to show that there is a, no resistance between the probes. If you connect the two probes together, you'll see the meter goes down and we now have a reading of 0 0.61 ohms. This value has to be remembered because this will have to be subtracted from any resistance value that we then take. To check continuity, what we're going to do is put it into buzzer position. As you hear, the, beep, the beeper starts, now test the two probes together, the beep starts, disconnect them, the beep stops. So if we want to do a continuity test, this would be a quick easy way of using it. Okay, what we're going to do is test the winding resistance of a motor the insulation resistance between the winding and the winding resistance to earth. The motor will be powered down, lockout target applied and proved dead using an AVI before you would ever connect an insulation resistance tester. The winding resistance will be done on all three windings. So what we're going to do is connect the red wire to U1. the black wire onto U2 and read the resistance which in this case is 26 point, sorry, 2.68 ohms which we have to subtract 0 0.56 from that which was the reading we had at the beginning. Now we're going to connect the red wire to V1, the black wire to V2. So now we have a resistance of 2.16 ohms. If we then connect it to red wire to W1 and the black wire to W2, read the resistance again, and this time we have 2.09. Now, they're not identical. This is due to the fact that we have electrical connections between the probes and each of the posts. So these will be slightly different depending on how good the connections are. So as long as they're within a acceptable value, we will be happy that the motor resistance is the same across all three windings. Okay, we will prove that the earth connection between the motor is good by doing a continuity test between the main earth connection and the motor casing. Switch it down to ohms mode. Connect one to the external earth of the motor casing and the internal earth connection inside the motor. So as you can see, we have a resistance of 0 0.48 ohms, sorry, one ohm or less. So as you can see, we are well below that. So. What we're now going to do is a phase to earth test first and we'll check all three phases in turn. So now we're going to put the meter into mega ohms mode. So on the thousand volt scale. Okay, then we're going to connect U1 and then F or ground. Press the test button. The meter, as you can see, goes up and now we're displaying a resistance of greater than 1,000 mega ohms. Release the test button. Now we'll do V1 to earth.
Yet again, we can see we have a resistance of 1000 mega ohms greater than that. So release the test button. And now we'll take W1 to F. Yet again, we can see the reading is 1000 mega ohms plus. So the insulation resistance of the windings to F is very good. Now what we want to do is check the insulation resistance between the phases. So now what we're going to do is connect between U1 and V1. Yet again we can see 1000 mega ohms plus, so that's very good. Now we're going to check between V1 and W1. Good, we have a resistance of 1000 plus again. And then we're going to check the last one, which is between U1 and W1. One thousand plus again. So, what you can see, we see, we've done. We've checked the continuity of each winding. We've checked the resistance of each winding to earth, and we've checked the, res the insulation resistance of each winding between each other winding. Okay. So the last function we're going to show you is using the lock position. The lock position only works in insulation mode. So yet again, we're going to switch it to a thousand volts. Connect one probe to another one, we will press the test button and also press the lock button. As you can see on the display we now have the padlock symbol which means the motor is, sorry, the meter is locked in insulation resistance test mode. If we disconnect the black wire and then connect it to another one, we do not have to press the test button at the end because it's already been locked in that mode. To switch it off that mode again, press the padlock and it then goes back into standby mode. Press the test button, we then activate the meter as normal. So, we've shown you what the good value looks like on a mega. Now we're going to show you what a bad value looks like. So, yet again, we're going to put the meter into mega ohms mode. Connect the two probes together. And then press test. So, as you can see this time, it flashed at the beginning. And it's now reading zero mega ohms, which would be a dead shot. Which would be a very, very bad value. And then when you're finished, remember, always switch it back to the off position. In conclusion, we have covered how to inspect the insulation tester and the cables before using it. We've covered the various test modes that the instrument uses when to use them. We've covered the safe use of the insulation tester and the importance of ensuring the equipment or installation is voltage free, locket target applied before connecting the insulation resistance tester. Thank you for watching this video, which is part of our series on electrical testers and instruments, and we hope to see you in our next video. Thank you for watching.